قصه پسین Okay, well, let's bring out now, representing Rosé Piscine, the USA Managing Director, Mr. Blake Helby. Morning, guys. So uh, I, I would imagine that we have a lot of rosé drinkers here. Okay, and uh, I'm also going to say something. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands. Uh, I'm not, not looking to out anybody here, but uh, the majority of you will at times uh, drop a, an ice cube or two into your glass of rosé, maybe on a hot day, maybe uh, when it's not cold enough, okay? Um, <clears throat> what, our, our product is uh, rosé piscine. Uh, the pronunciation is uh, like P plus, plus scene, so piscine. Um, we make our wine in southwest France, but uh, the, the story really begins in the south of France. Um, uh, our, uh, our head of the winery, uh, Jacques, uh, he spends most of his holidays in the south of France, typically around St. Maxime. And one of the things that he noticed, and this is uh, going back eight to 10 years ago, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of young people um, you know, on the beach, in the cafes, on the Esplanade, were ordering a drink that uh, he wasn't that familiar with uh, in his region of southwest France. Uh, it's called the piscine, uh, and literally what the piscine is, it is a colloquial expression for uh, rosé on the rocks, typically in a cognac snifter, okay? So uh, you, could, you could go into most bars and cafes uh, in the south of France and order a piscine, and they would bring you typically a house rosé on the rocks in that uh, cognac snifter. Uh, Jacques, being a wine guy, he, uh, he tried it. Uh, he thought it was fantastic at first. Um, you know, it was a hot day. It was, it was beautiful. It was refreshing. It was crisp. And then after about a minute or so, uh, his uh, highly trained palate kicked in, and he's like, oh, you know what? This is starting to uh, taste kind of watered down. Uh, he noticed that uh, the aromatic qualities of the uh, rosé had, uh, had diminished uh, substantially. Uh, he thought about it a while, and actually, in, when his holiday was over, he went back to the winery and decided to create the first rosé for piscine style consumption. Uh, it took a while to get it right, but uh, eventually uh, uh, we launched the brand in France, and uh, it, uh, it was immediately uh, a hit in the on-premise space because everyone was already familiar with this piscine concept. Um, so judges, what you have here is uh, you've got a glass of rosé piscine uh, in a large wine glass. Uh, traditionally, it would be served in a cognac snifter. Uh, you've also got a little bit of our wine um, without ice. Uh, what I would encourage you to do is uh, try a little bit uh, without uh, the ice first, okay? Just so uh, you get a sense for, uh, you know, what, what the wine is uh, in and of itself, okay? I didn't chill it, um, and that's actually by design. Uh, we never chill our wine, because um, you serve it on the rocks, so. Um, <clears throat> in, in France, I think that uh, there were two reasons that uh, it took off in the on-premise channel uh, so quickly. Uh, number one, everyone was already familiar with it, and then secondly, um, it, it's, it's actually, uh, the way it's traditionally served is uh, about two ounces of uh, ice and four to four and a half ounces of our wine. So it's about six pours per bottle. So it was an interesting, uh, it was an interesting play in the uh, restaurant and bar space there. Uh, about four years ago, uh, I brought the brand to Brazil with a business partner of mine, and we launched it. Um, I think that the most surprising thing in Brazil was that, uh, not that it became the number one selling rosé in Brazil, but that it became the number one selling rosé in, in Brazil in literally less than one year. And a lot of that had to do with the package, actually. Um, if you look at the package, it's a highly recognizable bottle. Uh, Brazil is a social media-driven society. The average social media user in Brazil uh, spends 3.7 hours per day on social media, okay? And our bottle is probably the only rosé that people will literally recognize in every photo, like in the foreground, the background, um, it doesn't matter. People are going to recognize it. Um, in 2016, when I came uh, back to the U.S. Uh, to launch the brands here, uh, I quickly realized that uh, it wasn't as intuitive as it was in France. People didn't really understand that it's actually a real, it's a legitimate way of consuming uh, rosé in France. And uh, after getting a number of no's, I decided to uh, just get a, a solicitor's license with my clearinghouse in New York. And uh, last May, I uh, went out and sold, uh, started selling to uh, liquor stores in New York City. Uh, and by the end of the season, I had sold close to 1,000 cases to 65 accounts. And uh, with that, I was actually able to uh, go to uh, uh, some larger distributors 
Uh, and then earlier this year, we actually uh, ended up launching Connecticut with uh, Breakthrough. And uh, about a month and a half ago, uh, New Jersey with Fedway. And so far, it's going fantastically well uh, in both of those markets. I, I think that one of the most surprising things for me was to actually see that uh, the reps are truly excited about putting a bag of rosé piscine in their bag in the morning and going out and talking about it with their customers. Because, you know, there's 500 rosé skews out there uh, in most markets, and this is the only one that's made to drink on ice. So. I, I guess noticed that. that it's a, a little, I'm sorry, Mike. That's okay, thank you, Blake. Yeah. Let's hear it for Blake. You ready to hear from our judges? Sure. All right, judges, take it away, Meredith. Um, yeah, so the style of rosé is, um, the style of rosé we're used to from the south of France is off dry, been really a little dusty. This is very sweet. What is the sugar content? So uh, it's 2.6 grams per 100 ml, okay? So it's a little bit on the sweeter side. So your typical Provence-style rosé would probably be one to one and a half, sometimes less than one if it's bone dry, okay? Um, what you're gonna notice is that as it continues to interact with the ice, your perception of that RS actually declines substantially. It, Blake, it's a, it's a little bit, to her point, it's a little bit heavy handed yeah. than most rosés, and you're promoting a, a, a style of drinking it that consumers here aren't aware of. Um, it's, you, you're trying to own the name Piscine, but it's a style of serving in France, is that right? You, uh, if you ask for a Piscine, you said they bring out a house rosé. So it, it's a colloquial expression for okay. rosé on the rocks. The good news is, is I think consumers in America are starting to adopt wine with glass in it, or with, with the ice in it, excuse me. Uh, like Aperol Spritz, for example, is starting to, to show up here. So that I don't think that it's so alien a concept that someone would put ice in a glass of wine, but this will be a different way from all rosé consumers to consume it. You say you, you, you prefer to present it not chilled. You, you prefer that they go on ice always. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Uh, and, I, and so we, we do a lot of things uh, with the bottle. Uh, our POS in the stores is, is really emphasizes the serve over ice element. So you know, our uh, you know, floor stack case displays, case cards, shelf talkers, it, it all really emphasizes the uh, serve over ice element. I think it's a smart move, Blake. It's a smart move because, uh, you know, as I was going through some suppliers this week and we we're talking about the rosé categories exploded. When I started in the early 70s, our idea of rosé was vin rosé. And, uh, and I never thought it'd make the comeback that it's making. The problem now is that it's such a crowded category. You've now created a proprietary name versus rosé and a way of consuming that differentiates you from the rest of uh, the marketplace. Uh, my only uh, other question, and I'll turn the table over again, is uh, from a distributor's point of view, is this uh, product available stateside or does it have to be ordered in containers? Yeah, so I, we bring it over in 40-foot uh, containers, and uh, right now I'm warehousing. Uh, but can you order as a wholesaler, can you order it less than a container full or does it have to be a whole container? Oh, no, I, I mean, uh, we, we sell to Breakthrough and Fedway, you know, two pallets at a time typically. So. Okay. Uh, I tell you, I love it. You know, I just to cut, as Sid said, cutting through the clutter today. In terms of taste and profile, we play in such a broad spectrum. To me, it is the concept sell of it. Drinking it on ice, different concept, and I think it's brilliant. I, I think you will do very well with this brand, uh, with all that we have to sell. Why are salespeople? get excited, it looks different. Yeah. It's something different that is clearly easily articulated, both for the on-premise and off-premise. So I'm glad our people were smart enough to pick it up in one. I'm sorry I lost the other one, but one out of two isn't bad. Well done. Um, I, you know, I like the packaging, but my only concern is from a retail standpoint. I agree. You know, are you having to educate the consumer? It doesn't, I don't know what it is when I'm looking at it where you know, most of the competitors are on the shelf. I know exactly what it is and, and I go and grab it. How are you, I guess, making your product jump off the shelf and, and letting people know exactly what it is? Well, I mean, it really does jump off the shelf already and the back well, shelf. Well, it does, but, but I don't know what it is. But it, exactly, you, yeah. you're right. So uh, a lot of our POS materials in the stores really, you know, so we use case cards and uh, floor stack case displays. Um, I, I wish I could show you one, but uh, you know they're, they're big. They're like you know you know foot and a half wide, two feet tall, and they say serve over ice. The original French rosé okay. made to serve uh, over ice. Okay. My, um, my one concern, uh, and while I agree the packaging really does pop on the shelf, it has to. Yeah. Uh, one of the great things about rosés 
is being able to see that color yeah. and that brightness in the glass and in, in the glass bottle and the packaging. Yep. And, and it's hidden there, you can't see it. Yeah. Uh, unlike a Cabernet, where the, that color doesn't really matter as yep. much when you're looking at on the shelf, with Rosé, it makes all the difference. So have you thought about, I don't know, a, a, a window in the package or some way yep. to show that brightness of the, uh, yep. of the color of the Rosé? So, so we've actually already submitted uh, a cola in the US for a bottle, a version of this bottle where the white stripes are transparent, okay? Uh -huh. um, it's something that we've experimented with, quite frankly, though, in Brazil. In Brazil, it actually didn't sell as well as, uh, as this. And, uh, and we experimented with the same package in, in France, actually, as well. And people, I think, were just so used to this and, and our branding that they preferred this. It was interesting, but I'm willing to, to try it in the U.S. I would like to try it. It makes, it's, it, it's intuitive. Um, and I think it's just one of those things you've got to try out. Well, I think what uh, the Franco-American translation also of the word piscine in, in English, it sounds a little bit, the word is a little, you know, off. But if we knew that the word in French means swimming pool, which is the color of your bottle, it, mm -hmm. and you're not, you're not playing on that. You're playing on a, a name of a drink. But if people knew that the bottle was the color of a swimming pool, that you drink it by the swimming pool, I think that would be a good marketing yep. uh, addition. So the other thing about this uh, package, this is actually a sleeve. Um, it's very unusual, uh, this packaging style. It's, um, um, and what that does is it, is it actually helps to protect the bottle in the event of breakage. So it's, it's safer to use poolside. Um, and, and the word piscine, like you, uh, you pointed out, um, most people that speak Spanish or Portuguese, they're also going to uh, know what it means, you know, piscina, uh, piscina in Italian, um, even if they don't speak French, so. All right, well, that's the judges' feedback. Thanks so much, Blake. Great job, Blake. Very interesting.